Gather round, get comfy and brace yourselves. We've got another short story collection to jump into. Here are 19 reasons to read just after sunset. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Dave Musson, at Dave Musson on Instagram, and this is the place where I'm taking you through the works of Stephen King in chronological order and giving you 19 reasons to read every single one of his books. If that sounds like something that would interest you, there's loads more videos on my channel. Have a click around and hey, hit subscribe as well if you like what you see so you don't miss any videos in the future. So in this video, we're still in 2008 and King's fifth collection of short stories just after sunset. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos on his short story collections, so those videos on Night Shift, Skeleton Crew, Nightmares and Dreamscapes or Everything's Eventual, you'll know that I like to shake up the 19 reasons thing a little bit. So for this one, I will give you nine reasons to read this book in general, and then I will count down my favorite 10 stories that are collected in this one. And I'll do all of this one spoiler free, so you can watch the entire thing, whether you've read it or not. Sound good? Okay, let's get into nine reasons to read just after sunset, and then my top 10 stories from this very book. Oh, and do let me know your favorites from this one in the comments. I love to hear what you have to say. So King got inspired to pull this collection together after being asked to be a judge for the Best American Short Stories Award in 2007. Reading so many short stories helped him find his own short story groove and get that mojo going again, and it inspired him to write Willa, which is the opening story in this. And from there, more of the short stories came, and pretty soon he had another collection on his hands. Now once that inspiration hit, it really did strike something in King. So there's 13 stories in Just After Sunset. The Cat From Hell is from the 70s. There are four more that were written pre-2006, but that leaves the remaining eight that were churned out between 2006 and 2008 when this book came out, at the same time that King was working on Under the Dome as well. He is a machine. So the previous different titles for this collection are quite fun as well. So when it was first listed on King's website, it was listed as just past sunset. But before that, King had hinted that it was going to be called Pocket Rockets, and then that it was going to be called wait for this one. Unnatural Acts of Human Intercourse, which unsurprisingly his publishers weren't massively keen on. So when this book first came out, upon King's request there was a special edition release alongside the regular one. Now the special edition had a DVD with it. Do you remember DVDs? Yes, it had a DVD with it that featured all 25 episodes of the animated series for N, which is one of the short stories collected in this one. So most of the stories for this were written some point between 2003 and 2008, but I've already mentioned Cat From Hell, which is from the 70s. Now it's a story that had been doing the rounds and had appeared in various anthologies over the years, but had never been formally collected in a Stephen King book up until just after sunset. N, which I was talking about in the previous point, was the only one that was previously unpublished when this came out. So following on from Doom a Key earlier in 2008, my video of which you can watch up there, a lot of the stories in this book are set in Florida, which kind of makes sense. King and his wife Tabitha decided to finally buy a second home in Florida in 2001 and they started spending the winters there, so he was obviously feeling inspired by his new second home. Now perhaps because so many of the stories take place in Florida, there aren't loads in this book that have connections with other King works. Although that being said, there are some characters in Mute who spend a little bit of time in a town called Derry. Also, N mentions Castle Rock and Chester's Mill, now the latter being the setting for Under the Dome, which would of course follow the next year. It's a little bit like when King had the Sundog set in Castle Rock as a bit of a preface to needful things coming after that one. As it stands, this collection remains largely untouched when it comes to movie adaptations, save for a bunch of Dollar Baby adaptations. But, but that's more reason to read this one now, so you know the stories before those Hollywood folk come hunting. So those are my nine reasons to read just after sunset. Now it's time to count down my top 10 favourite stories from this one, starting from 10 and going all the way up to my favourite. Again, no spoilers, of course, so keep watching. So at 10, 
Harvey's dream. It's short, it's sharp, it's full of Final Destination vibes and I approve of it wholeheartedly. At nine, stationary bike. A very simple idea, very well done. Have you ever really considered the true consequences of trying to get healthy? At eight, rest stop. And a look at how much an alter ego you might create for yourself can actually affect how you react in a fight or flight situation. This is a pretty cool exploration of exactly that. At seven, the gingerbread girl. Great tension and a really good little story. This just feels like a nasty little movie waiting to be made. At six, the things they left behind. One of the most simple and effective post 9-11 pieces of work I've read. Really very well done. At five, mentioned it a few times already, but N, this Lovecraftian tale of weirdness that will just get under your skin. At four, another one we mentioned already, The Cat from Hell, classic king from the actual 70s. Really simple story. A hitman is hired to take out a cat. Pretty easy job, right? Well, at three, Mute. This one is so cruel and so clever, I think it's really fantastic. At two, it's Willa, a quite beautiful story about a young couple waiting for a replacement train to show up. The writing in this one is stunning. You can see why this is the story that inspired King to write more short stories. And technically speaking, it's probably the best one in here, even if it's not quite my favorite. And that's because my favorite, my number one, is a very tight place a really thrilling, claustrophobic story that is quite literally full of shit. This one has taken residence in my head since the first time I read it more than 10 years ago now, and pff, I love it. So there we go, nine reasons to read just after sunset and my 10 favorite stories from this one. Let me know what you think of this and let me know your favorite stories from just after sunset in the comments below. If you enjoyed that, there's loads more to watch on my channel. Do click around, see what you find, and hey, hit subscribe as well so you don't miss any in the future. And if you want to chat King, his short stories, his novels, anything else, hit me up on Instagram. I'm at Dave Musson, always happy to hear from you. Next up, we've got a quite mega doorstopper of a novel to go through, as we're going to get cut off from the rest of the world in the little town of Chester's Mill. Take care.